We got tampons in boys' elementary school bathrooms, but don't you dare put a post up on Facebook of that or you'll get banned for something stupid like hate speech. And it's going to be fact-checked by some guy sitting in his mom's basement in a beanbag naked eating Cheetos that thinks men can breastfeed and they have pronouns in their email signature. That's crazy. What the hell happened to this country? I have never heard of Carl Higby before in my life, okay? And then I ran into him on a Facebook video and... This man right here has completely destroyed, annihilated every left-wing agenda that there is out there, okay? This video right here, it was so good that I'm going to have to force myself to provide commentary on it because I don't really know what to say, honestly, because he hit every single nail with everything he said in this entire video, okay? It's about a nine-minute video. I really want you guys to see this. Because he clearly defines all the problems that's going on in America and what we need to do to solve them and what they're doing to the American people, okay? And so I want you guys to watch this video, okay? I want you to see this. We're going to go ahead and hop into this video. We're going to react to it, okay? But before we do, do me a favor real quick. Hit that like button so YouTube can push this out to more people like you with the algorithm, okay? It helps a lot. It helps push the channel out. It's really recommendable. Um, so I appreciate you guys, um, and let's go ahead and hop into this video. Let's check it out. Like the world took off on some weird path down this like cultural upside down, where everything you once knew about America has basically been lit in fire, and they flush the ashes down the toilet. You ever feel like you're just screaming at your TV because we here in America just invent stupid stuff to be mad about? I'm there. Consider this next few minutes like deeply therapeutic for me, but I just got to get some of this stuff off my chest. And the Wokies, if you're hyperventilating, wearing a mask alone in your car on your way to yoga or whatever you do in your off time, you can freak out all you want. I'm done staying silent on all this social justice groupthink. They can call me bigoted or uncultured or whatever other istophobic, phobophobe thing they come with. I'm so far beyond caring about anything these people say. You know what I do care about? That the government knows more about me than I do about them. And they work for me. And I have a Fourth Amendment right, and they apparently don't, don't even care about that. That Congress can sit there and tell me a bold-faced lie all day, but if I lie to them, it's a felony. I don't feel too represented by that. Hmm. And those same people printing money, saddling my children with debt so they can ship pallets of cash to countries that hate us, some of which turn around and go buy weapons that are used on American service members. Then nothing happens. It's just my take. Any country that can afford to send money from its citizens to other countries is taxing its citizens a little bit too much. That's All the while seemingly not caring that everything here costs more. People can't afford their mortgages and are having their homes taken away. Meanwhile, squatters are moving in rent-free while the homeowners get arrested for changing their locks. Then I got to listen to KJP go up there and tell me how good the economy is doing. It's not. Stop gaslighting me. Don't talk to me like I'm stupid. I see this with my own two eyes. Look, I, I pay your salary, lady. And then the salaries of these government employees that on average, by the way, make 40% more than their civilian counterparts. KJP, this woman, for doing nothing well in her entire life, makes $174,000 a year. She hasn't given me one straight answer since she stepped up to that podium, I don't wow. know how long, it seems like 40 years long, by the way things are going. Oh, Carl, you seem so, I am angry. I'm really angry. I have had enough of this crap. I feel like a second-class citizen in my own country. Well, illegal immigrants invading my homeland get handed $1,400 debit cards. You get an iPhone 15. That's a fact, okay? That's a fact. We, I feel like a second-class citizen in this country. I know so many other people do, too, because we do. And there's nothing. I, I, if, if an immigrant comes to our country the right way, I used to be against this. I used to always think like, why, if these people are escaping their countries and they want to come to a better country, why not let them come and enjoy America? But then I got older and I start realizing what problems can occur <laughs> with that happening. And you got to do it the right way. If you cannot get the paperwork the right way, you should not be allowed to enter into our country because we can't do that at any other country. That is crazy. So, and, and they get a lot of benefits for coming here. And a lot of people that are citizens in America do not get these same benefits. Look around. We got so many people homeless. They should be getting some benefits, some kind of help, but they don't. 
So I, I agree with and him. And free hotel rooms. It's like an Oprah scene. You get a car, and then you get a car, but we as citizens get nothing. American citizens are on the street because we're getting evicted from our homes, because we can't pay our mortgages, because we're losing our jobs to some machine that was automated after some bureaucrat decided to raise the minimum wage to $20 an hour, and now companies can't afford to keep people employed. We got 20 veterans a day killing themselves. Others are sleeping on trash bags after fighting a 20 year war for our country's military industrial complex, only to turn the country right back over to the same terrorists we just fought. And then when we get home, we get put on some waiting list while we're trying to get help, while the VA rehires 8,000 incompetent fired employees. And then finally, if, Finally, we do get an appointment at our local VA. Sometimes it's like 200 miles away from our home. God forbid they need, we, you know, we need to talk to a shrink because we shot a terrorist and it deeply disturbs us. We're told that this administra by this administration that we can't use the term radical jihadist because it might hurt their feelings. I mean, excuse me for not caring. Uncle Sam can send us 6,000 miles away to shoot these people, but I'm not allowed to come home and call them a mean name. You can get bent. This Dang. government doesn't want me to use the term radical jihadist, illegal immigrant, or uh, call someone a tranny, but the President of the United States can stand in front of U.S. Marines in Philadelphia and call you and me a threat to America because we voted for the other guy. Illegals wow. are getting fist bumped from border agents while getting waved through the border with like sacks of drugs on their backs that kill Americans, by the way. Yet TSA pats me down, checks my bag, gives me everything but a proctology exam and makes grandma get out of her wheelchair when we're trying to get on a plane to fly from one American city to another American city. Meanwhile, you got, got real threats. Girls here in New York getting punched in the. He got a point there with the TSA. They are crazy tight. When it comes to us getting on one plane and trying to go to one to another city, it's so strict. But how are these people coming to our borders, swimming over, taking little, I don't know, just whatever way they get, they're getting over here, these little boats and different things, and they just get welcomed in? They don't get, like, there's no background check. There's no type of figuring out who's actually a bad guy and who's a good guy. It's kind of, it's... It's kind of crazy, for real, if you think about it. Face just walking down the street for no reason. What are they doing about it? Nothing. People fighting on subways, and the guy who kicked a cop in the face, that immigrant, that illegal immigrant, they let him walk right out the front door of the courthouse sporting double-barreled middle fingers. And wow. then these deep blue cities wonder why they can't retain their police force. Gee. Instead of dealing with any of that, you throw Daniel Penny in jail for actually protecting innocent people against a crazy guy. Then send up the bat signal, man. These, this is the inmates running the asylum. My producer was thrown off a bus that she takes lawfully every day because that day the scanner didn't properly read her bus pass. Where she just takes this every day. And then she's got to go take a day off, go to court where they said, oh, here's another $100 fine because our equipment didn't work. I mean, why is it that these people who are supposed to be civil servants are increasingly not civil, nor do I feel like they're serving anyone? That's a this fact. makes me want to dump a bunch of tea in the harbor. You wonder wow. where all these people and these crazy ideas come from? I'll tell you. They came from our educational system that prioritizes its own function and structure and dystopian beliefs over actually teaching our kids anything worthwhile. You, can, you can't say anything about it either, otherwise the FBI is going to come in the G-man and put you on some domestic terrorist watch list. Parents are getting hauled out of school board meetings for reading the very books being provided to our children. No, nope, you can't that read one. that to your sir. It's inappropriate for a public forum like an adult school board meeting. Yeah? Then why the hell is it in my second grader's classroom reading, Randy Weingarten? That's a fact. And I've seen those type of videos. I've seen videos where these parents are coming into these school boards and they're complaining, complaining about the books that are in the classrooms, that are in the libraries of our schools, are little children. And they say these, these books are just insane in what they're teaching and the type of language in the books. But you can't, but they don't want you to read them at the school board. They say this is inappropriate. That's crazy talk. And that's an agenda, a secret agenda that they're, they're just implanting in our kids and in our lives. And it's going to destroy us. This stuff right here is just ridiculous ridiculous they don't need to know about all of these intricate things regarding the body 
at age seven, eight, nine. They need to learn math, science, reading, technology. Like they need to learn all of that. The, the, the basics that drive America. But yet we want to teach them about these <laughs> pronouns that aren't even real. It's ridiculous. I mean, good Lord. If you're as angry at, at, at this as I am, good. We're not the crazy ones here. We got tampons in boys' elementary school bathrooms, but don't you dare put a post up on Facebook of that or you'll get banned for something stupid like hate speech. And it's gonna be fact-checked by some guy sitting in his mom's basement in a beanbag naked eating Cheetos that thinks men can breastfeed and they have pronouns in their email signature. That's crazy. What the hell happened to this country? There's so many terms now I'm supposed to remember to be sensitive about people. And according to some purple-haired barista, I'm supposed to refer to myself as cisgender rather than just saying I'm normal. Can't say that. Or their flesh hoop earrings will combust wow. and I'm supposed to care about their feelings. I don't. And if you don't want to live in the land of make-believe with their random pronouns or stupid weird fetishes, I'm shouted down. I'm doxxed. I'm made out to be the bad guy because this generation is so soft. This generation is so lucky to have never endured a hardship that, it, that they think that if you have a difference of opinion, it's considered violence now. I mean, bring back the draft. Let them see what actual violence really is. It give them a little bit of perspective on stuff. We have an entire generation graduating from high school that has never been punched in the face on the playground. And it shows. That's true. These people true. destroy everything they touch. They never make anything better with their incessant whining. These liberals take over cities and areas like locusts. They legalize drugs. They cheer on lawlessness. And then you, you can't walk a block without stepping over a homeless man or seeing a heroin needle laying on the ground. And then they cry, why didn't you warn us about that? Well, we tried, but you called us racist. Wow. We're rewarding all the wrong things. I mean, and it, what's shocking is it's still a 50-50 proposition in this country. This makes me want to stop paying taxes. Oh, I can't do that because they'll throw me in jail. But Democrats can rob stores, break stuff, burn cities to the ground, crash our borders, squat in people's homes, jump turnstiles, and assault women in the street. But if I stop paying my taxes, if I stop Dang. paying the salaries of those allowing the stupidity, I'll go to jail. Like, what? <laughs> the Yo, this dude is wild, bro. He is wild. I, like I said, I agree with everything he's saying. People that don't agree with this guy are the ones, they're part of the problem, man. They're part of, they're, they're ones that they don't care about um, godly things such as uh, the genders or our roles or our sexes. They don't care about that. They don't care about um, businesses, small businesses and supporting them and having them um, have a uh, like a privilege that larger corporations don't need because they have a lot of money. With smaller businesses need these things. They don't care about that. Uh, they don't care about, they, like, they're the ones that are a part of the LGBTQ, a lot of them. And they don't care that um, we are forced to comply with them, with them, but they don't have to comply with us. They don't care because it's they're on the side that is doing the, like, making people comply. So... He's right, man. He's right. A lot of we got a lot of problems in America. I'm gonna finish this video and then I got something to say because I heard something about there being this huge issue in Texas right now that could possibly cause a civil war. Um, and so we're gonna talk about that after this video is done, but let's watch the rest of this. People living off of and taking advantage of the system have more rights than those of us who are actually supporting it and living by its laws. This is insane. I don't even recognize this country anymore. The country that I came back from war and cried when I kissed the ground because I was thankful to be back. Now I'm the one being called crazy for loving what this country once was and hating what it's become. That term, make America great again, has never been more enduring to me. That's a fact. I'm not a threat to this country. People like you and I at home who are watching this, we're the only things keeping it intact. I've worked and I've paid taxes and I've had a job since I was in high school. I spent nine years in the military. I own businesses. I've employed people. I've been an elected member of my town council. I participate in community service. I don't break any laws. Yet I'm being told by some doddering old man that happens to live at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue that I'm a threat to democracy. And I got two words for that that I'm not allowed to say on TV. Wow. Folks, it's time to get loud. Can't stay silent on this anymore.
okay, so uh, apparently there's there was a standoff at a place called Eagle Pass um, in Texas regarding their government and the federal government. And apparently, from what I can see, the Texas government blocked Border Patrol from getting through or allowing immigrants to get through that park. The calls for Texas to defend itself and defy the federal government have set fire to a long simmering fight over states' rights emboldening right-wing figures, okay, at this area. Daniel Miller felt encouraged last week as fears of a new civil war trending online in a coalition of powerful, powerful Republicans coalesced behind Governor Greg Abbott's standoff with the Biden administration. As the longtime leader of the Tex- of Texas's unlikely secessionist movement, secessionist movement, Miller has for decades argued that the state is in a uh, stranglehold by the federal government that eventually would prompt enough popular support for a vote to leave the union the past week only reinforced that belief. And so apparently they, they like stopped the federal government from getting into that park from what I can see. And it, it was a standoff between the Texas government and the federal government, which is insane. We need, we need more people like him, honestly, speaking for our country um, because he's, he's balanced from what I can see. I don't know a lot about him. If you do, let me know in the, in the comment section. Um, like I said, this is my first time hearing about him, but to me, he sounds like a pretty balanced guy who understands the problems that's going on in our society and is... Um, very certain that um you know there's there needs to be a change and his words are the words that's coming out of a lot of americans mouths or that we are thinking that's what i can say about it everything he said is the things that i've been wanting to say anyways look let me know what you guys think about this video in the comment section okay if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, I encourage you hit that subscribe button, hit the post notification bell so you don't miss another video, okay? My name is Aaron Page. I'm going to catch y'all on the next video. Until next time, I'm out.